For a show about vampires and werewolves, Netflix's new series Wednesday has straight up taken over the world, and for good reason. From brilliant gothic direction to absolutely perfect casting, this Adams Family spinoff directed by Tim Burton, focusing on the creepy clan's daughter, is pure joy. Wednesday Adams is not the girl of your dreams, she's the stuff of your nightmares. There's a world where everyone talks in zingy one-liners, where the creature design is too scary for children, but too cartoonish for adults, and numerous hidden Easter eggs and references to director Tim Burton can be found in season one of the show. That is, if one focuses on the tiny details. Missed out on these hidden details? Don't worry, because today we'll be counting down all the things that you missed while watching Wednesday. Warning, spoilers ahead. Number one, the iconic black dress. One of the most iconic moments in the Netflix series is Wednesday Season 1, Episode 4's dance scene, partially due to the title character's eccentric dance moves and partially because of her black dress. The ruffle dress is meant to make Wednesday Adams stand out among her peers at Nevermore Academy, as the rest are donning modern white outfits while Wednesday wears a vintage black style. While the outfit is certainly unique, the dress from Wednesday's dance scene is also strikingly similar to the ruffled red wedding dress worn by Winona Ryder's gothic character Lydia Dietz in Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. And this isn't the only reference of his other famous hits the director smoothly incorporated into the series. On number two, we have the Weather Vane Cafe. The biggest recurring Tim Burton Easter eggs in the show season one are the designs of the weather vanes on the back wall of Jericho's Weather Vane Cafe. While the weather vanes are largely obscured, a few of the designs can be seen from certain angles. One of the weather vanes is decorated with Willy Wonka's hat from Tim Burton's 2005 film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. A second weather vane at the cafe has scissors and a pin. This golden one could be referencing 1990's Edward Scissorhands and 2007's Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Another weather vane in Wednesday Season 1 features a headless horseman, a reference to Tim Burton's 1999 movie Sleepy Hollow, which stars Marilyn Thornhill, Laurel Gates actress Christina Ricci. Another thing you might have missed, Wednesday hating pilgrims is a reference to Adam's family values. In the first episode of Wednesday, our stormy heroine gets into a coffee shop brawl thanks to her hatred for pilgrims. Wednesday's loathing of pilgrims in Pilgrim World, a pilgrim-themed amusement park in Jericho, is a direct reference to the beloved sequel, Adam's Family Values, in which siblings Wednesday and Pugsley are sent to Camp Chippewa. It's Wednesday, then played by Christina Ricci, who ends up setting fire to the camp's romanticized Thanksgiving play, delivering her infamous monologue about the cruelty of the pilgrims. And by the way, bonus Easter egg, the archery scenes at Nevermore are another Adam's Family Values reference, Wednesday and her brother practice archery in the 1993 film. Moving on to number three, Principal Weems' Shrunken Head. Principal Larissa Weems' office is filled with Easter eggs and references to past Adams Family adaptations and Tim Burton movies. One of these Easter eggs in Wednesday is a shrunken head, which Weems has placed in a glass display on her desk. The shrunken head is another reference to Beetlejuice, as the title character sits next to a man with a shriveled head while in the ghost-filled waiting room. Wednesday Season 1's reference to the Tim Burton movie is pretty spot on as it even features the same hairstyle as the ghost in Beetlejuice. Number four, the Hyde's design calls back to Beetlejuice and Pee-wee's big adventure. Tim Burton's unique style inspires much of Wednesday's overall design, but even more so with the season's main monster, Tyler's Hyde. Unsurprisingly, Wednesday's Hyde monster was based on an original drawing by Tim Burton, with this sketch also being featured among Xavier Thorpe's drawings in his makeshift art studio. The Hyde's bug eyes, large head, unique claws, and exaggerated, distorted appearance are reminiscent of many past Tim Burton creature designs, but most clearly from two specific scary faces. In Beetlejuice and his 1985 feature film directorial debut, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. The face design of Wednesday's Hyde monster looks eerily similar to the scary snake monster that Michael Keaton's poltergeist character transforms into during Beetlejuice, particularly the head shape, wig, sharp teeth, and eyes. Beetlejuice wanted to prove that he could scare the Dietz family for the Maitlands, which this creepy monster design certainly accomplished. Wednesday's hide is also reminiscent of the frightening creature that Large Marge turns into in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Like Beetlejuice's scary snake, Pee-wee's monster design had a wig and giant eyes that seemed to have partially inspired Burton's hide drawing. Number five, the secret two snaps are from the original Adams Family theme song. The Secret Society at Nevermore Academy, the Nightshades, of course have a hidden passageway to their meeting place. However, there's no magic word, but a magic sound. Snap, snap. Snapping twice is what opens the entrance to the Nightshade's secret passageway, a nostalgic callback to the Adams Family theme song. The iconic two-finger snaps are featured throughout the song and have become one of the most famous details from the fictional family's presence in media. 
Number six, Pugsley's introduction is similar to his introduction in the original movie. In the show's pilot, Wednesday rescues Pugsley from a school locker after he was stuffed inside by bullies. Pugsley, played by Isaac Ordonez, is seen tied up with red string, completely helpless with an apple lodged in his mouth. This is a nod to 1991's The Addams Family, the first time Pugsley is shown on screen in the film. He's also tied up with an apple in his mouth. The only difference, Wednesday was shooting an arrow at him. Talk about archery skills, huh? Number seven, other members of the Adams family make appearances, kind of. While all members of the immediate Adams family physically show up on screen in Wednesday, Pugsley, Morticia, Gomez, Lurch, Uncle Fester, Thing, there are a few members of the extended Adams family who make an appearance in the show too. Grandmama Adams, Aunt Ophelia, and Cousin It all show up in spirit in the new series in varying capacities. In the basement of the Nightshades, a painted portrait of Ignatius It hangs on the wall. Cousin It is a biological relative to the Adams family, but is a non-human creature made entirely of hair who is known for his bowler hat, sunglasses, and unintelligible speech patterns. Morticia's sister Wednesday is Anne Ophelia, and Grandmama Adams are only present in the show by name. Grandmama Adams is mentioned in passing dialogue, and it's revealed that Wednesday's dorm hall is named after Ophelia. Moving on to number eight, Edgar Allan Poe is referenced everywhere. Edgar Allan Poe is a fictional alumnus of Nevermore Academy, and it shows, besides the name of the school being a Poe reference in itself, and for your information, Poe's The Raven focuses on a man driven mad by a talking raven that only utters the word nevermore. There are Poe references all throughout the series. Wednesday sees ravens in a foreboding and important vision, Principal Weems has a taxidermied raven sitting on her desk, and the Poe Cup is one big medley of Poe literary trivia. Each team boat in the race references one of Poe's short stories by name or design. Enid and Wednesday's team boat is named the Black Cat. Bianca's team boat references the Gold Bug. Xavier's team boat is literally named the Amontillado, referencing the cask of Amontillado. And the fourth team boat is named the Pit in the Pendulum. But it's not just the boat that names that have secret references. The costume Wednesday wears is a secret Easter egg in itself. Wednesday's Black Cat Suit. In Season 1, Episode 2, Enid Sinclair and Wednesday don black cat suits to match the theme of their canoe. Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. The design of the costume is reminiscent of a few key outfits from previous Tim Burton movies. The most obvious Tim Burton reference from The Black Cat Suit is his 1992 film, Batman Returns, as Wednesday and Enid's costume reflects the suit worn by Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Wednesday's suit is also similar to that of the title character in Tim Burton's 1990 movie, Edward Scissorhands. Considering Wednesday's costume designer Colleen Atwood also worked on Edward Scissorhands, the similarities between the two outfits don't appear coincidental. Number 11, Wednesday meets Wednesday. This just might be the biggest Easter egg in the show. Christina Ricci, who plays the deadly plant botany professor at Nevermore famously portrayed Wednesday Adams in the 1990s Adams Family movies. Richie, now 42, shows up in the new Tim Burton-directed series as Ms. Thornhill, one of Wednesday's Jenna Ortega's teachers at Nevermore Academy. Marilyn is unique because she is the school-only normie teacher. She has no special abilities, and she's not considered an outcast like Wednesday and the other students. All the other teachers have something strange about them, making them outcasts. Marilyn's hiring is an effort by Nevermore Academy to bridge the gap between normies and outcasts and, hopefully, ease tension between the two rival groups. Marilyn appears to be a kind, trustworthy teacher that wants to make Wednesday feel comfortable and welcome in her new school. The initial trailer for the series showed Marilyn welcoming Wednesday with a black dahlia and offering to provide any assistance she might need. Behind the scenes, Richie and Ortega bonded over the character they've both played during her formative years. Richie portrayed Wednesday as a child, so Ortega had a different challenge ahead of her to bring Wednesday into her teenage years. Number 12, Wednesday's showrunners' names are hidden in plain sight in Jericho. It's a blink and you'll miss the moment, but if you go back to episode one, you'll find the names of the showrunners in the town. If you have been to any of the Disney parks, you know that there are special names painted on the windows of Main Street. They have done much the same in the fictitious town of Jericho on Wednesday. We see Miles Miller and Alfred Gow, the showrunners, last names are printed on a window at Wednesday's therapist office. Miles Miller's and Alfred Gow's surnames are printed in Miller and Go on the room window. Last but not least, the origin of Wednesday's name. Cartoonist Chas Adams, creator of the Adams Family cartoons that started it all, designed the famous characters with no names. Though each family member was eventually named as the characters grew in popularity, there was a clear source of inspiration for the naming of Wednesday, a nursery rhyme from the 1800s called Monday's Child. Her name comes from a line from my favorite nursery rhyme. Morticia Adams tells Principal Weems of the fictional yet true backstory to Wednesday's name in the pilot. The full nursery rhyme goes something like this. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. 
Thursday's child has far to go. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for a living. And the child born on the Sabbath day is Bonnie and Blythe, good and gay. Well, folks, that's all the secret references we have today. But we're sure there are more Easter eggs scattered throughout Wednesday. Did you find any that aren't listed? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and thanks for watching.